All right, let's talk about this Gemini new moon that is happening tomorrow morning from where I live and really explore what is going on because there is a lot happening with this Gemini new moon, not so much in um, conflicting energies, actually just in Gemini. And so you might see that, you might actually feel that, like a lot of uh, conflicting thoughts, maybe just racing thoughts, just like, I can't freaking focus. Like what is going on? And that's, that might be your experience. Let me know what your experience has been so far in the approach to this Gemini new moon. Let me know in the comments, but let's talk a little bit more about it. So this Gemini full moon, as I pull this screen up, um, as we look at it, where is my notes? All right, as we look at this Gemini new moon, I just want to highlight the simple things. Now, if you have this book, the Zodiac workbook and journal that I have created, you can purchase this on of Amazon. It's actually for Gemini season. And it's something that you can, it's intentional for just the, the month of Gemini. I'm having the cancer book is almost about to be released. Um, and you can pre-purchase that also on Amazon um, here soon. But look, this is a great resource if you're wanting to understand the the seasonal energy as the sun moves through a sign and how that impacts you and your own birth chart. That's a really great resource to help you work through that. And in that book, there are sections where you would want to note these details that I've put some together on this slide for you. So just be aware because these degrees and um, dates matter and they, they become a record for you to understand what is Gemini energy how does it impact your life? Because we are all the signs. We are not just our sun sign. We are not just our moon sign or our rising sign. We are all of them. And they show up in different areas of our life. And as we grow through life, we are developing different amounts or I guess percentages of these different signs. But it's a benefit to you to understand what does Gemini look like for you in your life. So just to get started, Gemini new moon will be at 16 degrees, 17 minutes. And where I live, it's at 6.36 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time. And um, yeah, daylight. So what we see here is that we see that the moon and the sun are conjunct with Venus, which creates its own very unique story. We'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, we see that Jupiter and Mercury are also pretty tight, four degrees to, between them, um, also in Gemini. And so we have five planets in Gemini during this full moon. In fact, it's not just, sorry, during this new moon, not just during this new moon, but it's been happening and will continue to happen through, um, through the rest of this month, at least for the next uh, few days. And then it will sort of wane off. So we might be feeling the apex of this as we approach and experience the new moon through the rest of this weekend. So, uh, we have all of this Gemini energy going on. And again, remember that in astrology, the planets they bring their own um uh expression but their their way they express themselves is always influenced by the sign that they're in so jupiter is going to fulfill its tendencies based off of the gemini impressions um so if gemini is about learning and connecting and gathering information and being curious and using your hands to do things, then you're going to see the Jupiter helps us do that in more of it because that's what Jupiter does. It enhances and expresses the expression of the sign that it's in. So same with Mercury, Moon, Sun, and Venus. And we'll we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, but I do want to point out that we have, as far as aspects go for this new moon, we have uh, Jup for the Sun and the Moon and Venus, they're all tightly conjunct at 16 degrees, um, we see that there's a, there is a sextile happening between, uh, these planets in the North node and Aries. We see that there's a square happening between these core, the sun, moon, and Venus and Saturn in Pisces. And then we see that there's a trine of course down happening down here. So that's because the nodal axis is always 180 degree opposite. Okay. So that's just indicating, Hey, we're hitting up some of these karmic patterns of self and others 
and how we process that information. All right. Um, the other thing that's sort of showing up is this Jupiter and Mercury. They are trining Pluto return Pluto retrograde in Aquarius. And, and then that sort of triggers in its own way, stimulates the Mars in Aries and as well as Neptune in Pisces. So everything's getting a little bit of uh, of a highlight because of this new moon, but we're going to stay focused for the most part on the, on the Gemini energy happening right now. So with that being said, let me pull up a different chart. I want to highlight one thing that I think is really important. And that is that, um, Venus, I mean, let me share my screen again with a better chart. S Venus actually just went, um, instead of rising, um, after the sun, it just a couple of days ago moved to, uh, I mean, it was rising before the sun and now it rises after the sun. And this deserves its own video because that shift in its placement regarding how it, you know, shows up in the planetary alignment, um, is actually an indicator of it being in a unique part of its phase. And it's in the full moon, I guess I would say phase of its growth as it moves through its own cycle around the sun. And in that energy that deserves like a whole new video and it is fascinating to consider, but just remember that Venus is in this like bright full moon phase. It is ex learning how to um, express what we, you it is you desire and want in your relationships, but not in necessarily um, partnerships or marriage, but in your acquaintances and how you gather information through other people and how you network and sort of reevaluating, is that helping you become more of you? And the reason I say that is because Venus started its cycle um, in its phase phase growth um, in Leo at the last Venus retrograde. And that's when the new phase started for Venus. And now it's at its full moon part of that phase of growth in Gemini. And so if we look at that phase, we see that um, how we express ourselves is a big is, is going through a developmental phase of growth and awareness of what it is that we want or what is it that we value and see in the relationships around us that help us better express ourselves. Now with Gemini energy, just to remind us, lots of times people are like, oh, Gemini's just talk. Gemini's just can't shut up. Um, this, yeah, maybe that's possibly a true part of that. But Gemini's are quick thinkers. Um, I would say not in person all alone, just, but if they have a strong Gemini energy, they're going to be generally thinking pretty quick, gathering information. They're, uh, they're very curious. Um, and so when we look at the energy showing up right now, it is this ex invitation to really not just be overly stimulated with the information that we gather and the conversations that we're having and the things that we're learning. It's actually really about getting curious asking more questions and doing a lot more listening with this, this much heavy Gemini energy. It's not so much like overstimulating us. It's not, the energy is naturally overstimulating. So to balance that out, it's more about quieting down, actually asking more questions instead of, um, and, and exposing more questions instead of, just gathering more information. So you see the question is the first thing that you need to lead with instead of like, just more, just more d data, just more people, just more, more, more. Um, and Gemini just thrives on all the things, all the, that wants to know all the people, wants to um, connect to all the people, wants to gather all the courses, classes, conversations, social media, it's its just going to be sort of sporadic and, and chaotic energy with so much going on during this new moon in Gemini. So I would really encourage you to make time to be more uh, curious about your thoughts, curious about your connections, curious about the people around you, curious about your emotions, curious about how you perceive yourself. You remember the sun being our identity and the moon being 
um, our identity, I guess I would say um, the sun being our ego or self, the way we see ourselves as, okay. And then the moon being more of that internal emotion is just a great reminder that, hey, like, uh, is this in sync? And what do we want our Gemini growth in the next 12 months to look like? Because when these planets come into contact with each other, especially at a new moon, it invites a new cycle of growth. And for this, it's going to be a new cycle of growth in our, our Gemini identity. So pay attention to your birth chart, go look it up and see what do you have near or to or close to Gemini 16 degrees. And that might give you some insight in how this is influencing you right now. Okay. So just a couple of other things that I, I want to highlight, the thing that I feel is important. You have Mercury and Jupiter here trining Pluto retrograde. And with this trine, it really is this um, interesting opportunity to reflect on, are you really being authentic to who you are? Are you being curious about your thought patterns, your behavior patterns, your connections, your groups, the things that are you surround yourselves with, um, yourself with, are they being truly a reflection of your uh, of yourself? Are you are you showing up as yourself in these communities? Are you showing up as yourself in these conversations with people as you meet new people and as you expand your network? I think that's really uh, a vital thing to remember. And then as we look at this uh, square of Saturn in Pisces to the sun, moon, and Venus at this new moon, it is creating this tension. And, it, and Saturn has been moving through Pisces for a while. And so the the messaging of that is quite similar. It's like, are you doing the work to develop your spiritual abilities? Are you doing the work to increase your spirituality, to increase compassion to yourself and to others, to forgive, to let go, to release? And Saturn helps us do that work in the spiritual nature of ourselves um, as it moves through Pisces. And so it's creating maybe a little bit of tension between uh, maybe sibling relationships or other friendships or um, how we how we gather spiritual or metaphysical information um, that could be like you need to be more disciplined it needs to look a little bit different so I just encourage you to pay attention to um, to that master of Saturn helping us be more disciplined in our mind and in our spiritual practices, helping us to sort of say, hey, you can't just live in chaos all the time. Maybe let's like, let's calm this down a little bit. So meditation, again, is going to be a, a support right now. It's sort of interesting because that is a theme for the, and has been for the last year or so as, as Saturn has been moving through um, Pisces is, again, what are our spiritual tools that we are building, slowly building to increase our our spiritual stamina um, as we move through all the ups and downs of life. So there, there's more to be said here. I mean, this Pluto retrograde in Aquarius is, you know, being trying, creating opportunities for our identity to be like, hey, yeah, you might feel like you're breaking out of old stuff and coming into your a new place, which is so great. A rebirth is happening, especially as we saw that Venus shifting places with the sun. There is a rebirth in ourselves and what we value and who we want to be and, and how we think and how we go about building relationships. Um, but it also triggers that Mars and that Neptune. And in that, um, uh, there's an opportunity to develop some more spiritual gifts with that uh, Neptune in Pisces. And there is um, maybe a little bit of like, hey, we need to settle into our body and actually utilize our body in this process of transformation. The body is not on a standalone. It works in concert with our body, with our mind. And so the more our body and mind are, are working together and not just thinking over in a corner and not doing anything, but actually like using our body to help metabolize and process these thoughts that can be really, really helpful. So I wanted to highlight those things on uh, the, the new moon, a couple of tools that I want to bring to your attention. Uh, fennel essential oil. I muscle tested this as 
a perfect oil for this Gemini new moon. And the more I reflected on it, I was like, well, this is interesting. That's not what I would have normally chosen. But um, fennel is an influencer for the, um, not the somatic, the sympathetic nervous system. It helps us in fight or flight when we want to just react, right? Gemini is this um, easily overstimulated energy and very much inf influenced by the influences our nervous system as a whole. And so when it gets overstimulated, we have a hard time digesting and moving that information through us. And so you might find yourself feeling like a mental constipation right now, or maybe even a like a, just an energetic constipation with so much planetary energy in Gemini. It just creates more like more and more and more. And we're like, how do I, but how do I move this through? How do I metabolize this? So fennel essential oil is a wonderful oil for the digestive system and for the nervous system. It tastes a little bit like, um, uh, like licorice. I think it's lovely. I put a little drop under my tongue. Um, it's really great for metabolism and other, um, supports to the body. So I wanted to highlight this correlation because Gemini rules the respiratory system, the shoulders, the upper part of the, the body, the arms and the hands. It also influences our, um, our, yeah, arms, hands, and wrists. And then you can see that here we've right. noted that it, I'm sorry, my dog, Zane, can you shut my door, please? Just shut the door. Um, that it influences the nerves and nerve fibers, as well as the somatic nervous system, um, which is your peripheral nervous system. So it's picking up on things around you that is you're, you're sensing. It's like your sixth sense along with mercury. And that is being accentuated during this month and during this new moon. So pay attention to that and using fennel can help you sort of regulate that a little bit easier and move the energy through a little bit better. So utilize, it's not something I would diffuse. Like, I don't love this in the air. Um, I, I might put a couple of drops in my belly button on the regular, um, but just a drop or a little swipe of the top of the bottle underneath your tongue can be really helpful to move through this intense Gemini um, season energy. So I would encourage you if you want to utilize um, essential oils internally, just use doTERRA. They're the purest quality for internal use. Um, but it's going to, again, be supportive to the nervous system as a whole, help you digest better, help you take, help you take that information in and not get overstimulated, um, or at least a little bit less overstimulated with so much happening in, in the air right now during this new moon. So take that for, for some tips for you as you go through it. And just again, make sure that you're giving yourself time to not so much like be caught in the spiral of your thoughts, but to listen to others, to listen to yourself, to ask questions and to lead with curiosity in all that you do. That's the pure essence of Gemini is, is curiosity and questions and um, let that lead you maybe to a place that is less um, stuck or feeling congested or feeling uh, like paralyzed, but to just get curious about where are these thoughts coming from and why are they here and what is this correlated to? Yes, sometimes more questions create a little bit of more chaos in an initial moment, but it can lead to clarity as well. So lean in uh, to questions and get curious with others and within yourself. And I hope you guys have a wonderful Gemini new moon.